I don't want to get straight into this message because I've been looking at it for the last few days. It's a, a, a subject which is called Strongholds Broken. Look at somebody say, Strongholds Broken. You're going to like this. Not a lot, but you're going to like it. <laughs> Fasten your safety belts. We're going after your strongholds this morning. No screaming. Look at somebody say, No screaming. Okay, all right, if you have to go out, go out quietly and nobody know what you were dealing with, all right. This is the bathrooms, the toilets over here. If you have to go, go quietly, no screaming going out, because then nobody will know, absolutely. And then you'll be able to sit through next week's service, not embarrassed. Okay, here we go, I'm only messing with you. Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3. You really need to know this if you're going to help people. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not physical. They're not human or worldly uh, uh, weapons like the world would use. Our weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, to the casting down of imaginations, and of every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Let me start off by saying to this, we are not defenseless. We are not defenseless. God did not leave us to the mercy of our enemy. We are not easy targets. We have and have been given weapons. And these weapons are mighty, absolutely mighty. Very, very effective, according to that scripture we read this morning. Very effective in a certain region, in a certain area, and it is against strongholds. In fact, the Amplified Version doesn't call them strongholds, calls them fortresses. Uh, because in this country, we don't really know what a stronghold is. We're not, we're not, it's, it's not the type of word we would use every day. But we know what a fortress is. Because we have them all over the island of Ireland. we got fortresses all over the place. So when I say fortress, you can think of the one at Carrick Fergus. You're under, immediately now you know what it is. Uh, and the Bible says that they're strongholds. They're fortresses that the enemy sets up in our emotions, in our minds, sets up there against us, has a, has a dwelling place in there where he works against us uh, uh, through. They are fortified places. In other words, he, when he opens up uh, and starts to build a stronghold, a fortress on the inside of you, man, there's a lot of activity going on there, and he has it well fortified. Uh, uh, it's well established. In other words, it took a long time to build it up. But when he got it built it up, he reckons you'll not pull this down in a hurry. It's well guarded. And how you know it's well guarded? Because if somebody starts to talk about that person, if you hear that person's name, something rises on the... Uh, have you ever had that? Something rises on the inside. If you go to deal with something, or someone comes on the television, uh, something rises, you don't want to hear it, you'll switch it off. Let me tell you, that is the, the, the fortification, the stronghold on the inside of you being guarded. The enemy doesn't want you to deal with that, so he sends out his troops immediately so you won't bother in that direction. It is a very disguised place. Fortresses, they grow the same bushes as the land round about it. They try, it's big and it can't really but he, be hidden, but they do their best to blend it in with the terrain that it's built on so that, it, so that it looks like a part of the landscape. And so the enemy does it. He disguises his evil work and tries to make it out it's just your age, tries to make it out it's something that your granny had, tried to make it out it's just the way somebody hurt you or somebody did something, and he hides himself in it so that he doesn't get the blame. But once you know it's him, you can deal with him. And the Bible says we have weapons that are well able to deal with him. Not only to deal with the fortresses, the strongholds, but to enable us to deal with the, this one, casting down imaginations. Imaginations is where you end up, and we're going to deal with all this. We're going to open this up to you this morning. It's where you end up with a negative image. There's nothing worse than a negative image. A negative image will control you. Where nothing seems to work, nothing goes right. If it's anything bad going to happen, well, it's going to happen to me. No matter what anybody tells you, you've got something worse going on in your life. It's a negative image. 
You can't think anything positive. You can't think it's going to get better. You can't think positive at all. It's a negative image. And that, that, uh, we're going to deal with that in just, just a little while. There's negative images, but these weapons have the ability to break down, to demolish even those negative images. Or the places of trauma, because when the trauma happened, where you screamed and you cried all night and, and you brought your fist of this and, and the anger rose and that emotion got high in that moment of trauma is where the enemy took an advantage of you and then he builds a fortress in that one area that tra started off with trauma and system but we have weapons that can demolish that. You can't go back and relive that moment that actually happened in your life but you can stop the pain that, that comes with it when you tear down the strongholds or the scars from the past. If you're any age at all, you've probably got one or two broken hearts in your life. You've one or two scars of somebody who would say something, how you were hurt in church or how you were hurt in work or wherever it came. But I guarantee you there's scars. If there's scars, there's a stronghold because that's what the enemy wants to use against you on a daily, uh, uh, on a daily basis. Or deep-rooted hurts where you've been hurt, where you've been really hurt where all you did was try to bless and try to help them, but you got backlashed for it, and, and your world cave in. Deep hurts. They're deep-rooted hurts. Man, I tell you something, they'll follow you for the rest of your days, and they really want to capture your life so that you don't have freedom to go and do what you want to do. We haven't smiled in 10 years. And when you go to smile, suddenly this feeling rises up on the inside. You almost feel guilty for smiling. Well, you're not, mel you're not meant to feel guilty for smiling. You're meant to have a life. Or this place where it says where you have the ability, these weapons enables you to cast down and to destroy every high thing that exalts, exalts itself above the Word of God. Are those thoughts and ideas and suggestions that come to you that are contrary to the Word of God? You'd be surprised how many thoughts come to your mind that's not from God at all, but it tries to make out that it is. Well, you have weapons. You have weapons. We'll discuss this this morning. Weapons, and then we'll do something at the end to enable you to get free and begin to demolish these strongholds. A stronghold, then, is anything that's holding you back from being all that you can be in God. So I'll say it again. It's anything that's holding you back. It is anything that's a negative grip on your life. I don't need to explain that. You know what it is. But it can start with a thought. It can be one wrong thought. You just can't get it out of your head. It just, it just lives with you. So just one wrong thought. In fact, every stronghold starts with a wrong thought. And if you can deal with the wrong thought, if you can deal with it there, you'll not have to deal with the stronghold. But you don't know that, and you start listening to the thoughts before you know it. You have a stronghold, and then it's more difficult to get rid of what will explain that. Maybe it's a wrong thought or, a, or an addiction. An addiction. You never meant to get hooked. You, you just thought one will not do any harm, but now you can't live without one or two. An addiction. Or a negative label because somebody, somebody put it the way you were brought up, the way you were raised. You couldn't help it. It was the day and the time you live in. It was a period of life. You couldn't help it, but it sticks with you. Negative labels are emotional hurts because of what you went through. Or rejection. Rejection's a bad boy. It'll follow you. It'll taunt you. When everybody else is laughing, you'll be sitting seething. You, won't be, you want to pull your hair out after you've pulled everybody else's hair. It's rejection. It's a bad boy. But it's a stronghold. And it holds the door open for other things. But nevertheless, betrayal. When you've been betrayed, let down, walked on, abused. All those things have the beginning of thoughts that starts the first layer uh, of a stronghold. Or I say the trauma is one of the big ones. Or a bitterness on the inside of you. Or hatred. Uh, or fear. Fear is a ruling spirit, and that's a bad boy also. But it's anything that keeps you from moving forward. You know, people, and they haven't moved forward in 20 years. You meet them, they're still talking about the same thing. They haven't done anything they, with their life in the last five years. They have no idea that there is a life out there. They're just stuck in a, uh, in a cycle of madness back here. So a, so a stronghold is anything that keeps you from moving forward in your life. You can only go where your thoughts take you. So the enemy wants to captivate your thoughts so that he can steer you in the wrong direction. But God doesn't want you to remain where you are. 
He does not want you to remain where you are. Even if you're play, riding the uh, crest of the wave and you're in good place, he doesn't even want you to remain there. He has so much more for you to do. He has so much for you to achieve. He's got a whole life for you you have never, never even thought about, and it's out there, and it's waiting on you. He doesn't want you to be stuck where you are. He wants you moving. Here's what the Scripture said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. He says, I has not seen, nor any ear has ever heard, neither has it even entered into the heart of any man, the things, the things that God has prepared for him or her that loves him. That's so all you got to do, love him. He said, I got things prepared for you. But listen, but God shall reveal them to us by his spirit. God wants to reveal the things to you. But let me tell you something, a stronghold will stop you from hearing from God. A stronghold will stop you from seeing your tomorrows. A stronghold wants to overtake and block you off right where you are so you think you've got no life ahead of you, that this is it all, it's all over, and it's going to get worse. It's a, it's a stronghold, and it needs to be broken. Maybe it did come through a trauma or a drama in your life, and here you are ten years later, and you're still reliving the exact moment. You're still talking about the horrors of what happened to you, and, 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 and it's kept you sitting there. It, you're staying in that same place. It's a stronghold. And strongholds opens the door to fears, fears you never had before, fears you never thought that would captivate your life, but the will of is a stronghold there, anxieties in your life. You say, when I get older, I haven't got the same confidence. No, you just got more strongholds working against you, or the hurts are the betrayals. See, they get ingrained. The things happen a little bit of a time. You get let down by him. You get let down by her. Something, a trauma comes in. Something happens over here. And, and we start to talk about it. And we won't let it go. And it gets ingrained. It gets ingrained into our daily life and our daily system because we won't stop talking about it. We, we, we're given oxygen to it. We're given life. We just, we just rehearse it. We go over it and over it, and, and we look for somebody new who will listen. We go over again and tell the story all over again to them. And it comes to why people won't listen, but you'll find somebody else, and you'll just go over it and over it. When the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 31, it says, Take no thought. What does it mean by take no thought? Well, the next word tells you, take no thoughts saying. So whatever you're talking about is now the thought that's in your thinking, and that thought can direct you for the rest of your days. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27, he says, neither give place. Do not give any room to the enemy. Don't dwell on that thought. Don't think those thoughts over. Neither give place to the enemy. In fact, in James chapter 4 and verse 7, it says, submit yourself therefore unto God and resist. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. There's a translation that says, he will flee from you as if in fear, as if in terror. I'll tell you, some people's afraid of the devil, but the devil's afraid of them. And once you know that, you can begin to get things sorted. Now, Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, in the NIV version, it says, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing and perfect will. We need, to be, we need to be feeding on the Word of God so that we can saturate our thinking process and it, so that the Word of God will begin to wash us. It'll cleanse our thinking. It'll wash us. And, and, and it says in Psalm, Psalm 23, in verse 3, it says, He restoreth my soul. Now, uh, uh, listen, we, we don't even use that terminology, but here's a terminology we do use, and instead of using the word restore, we'll use the word reset. Have you ever had a reset? Have you ever got your phone and it's not working or your computer, so you hit the reset button? And when you go to hit the reset button, it'll warn you, everything now, all the data that's in the memory bank will now be erased. It'll be no more. Are you sure you want to hit the reset button? I tell you, you need to hit the reset button and put an end to that and put a stop to that cycle of thoughts that's harassing you every day of your life. And then when, it, when the thoughts go, when it, when it resets, it, then the book's open for you to start a whole new chapter of your life. You don't need to be thinking the same old thoughts. That's years ago. Come on. 
God has so much great things and good things for you, but it's a stronghold that's built in your life. And somewhere you're going to have to start and start to demolish it and take it apart. In 2 Corinthians again, 10 and verse 4, he says, For the weapons of our warfare, he said, they're not carnal. They're not, they're not physical weapons, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down the strongholds. In other words, if we could have got rid of it ourselves, we would have done it a long time ago. And the truth of it is, while it was a thought, while it was just a thought, we could have dealt with it. We could have turned around and said, I'm, I'm not listening to you, I'm not, I, and change your mind and change your thinking. I, I told you a long time ago, I, I don't open, you're the brown envelopes when the bells come, everybody knows what a, what a bell looks like, you just you kind of know the color of it, or you know the stamp on it. I never open them on a Friday afternoon. I don't know, I do not open a brown envelope on a Saturday, because I look, I, I can't pay that to Monday, but what will happen is I'll think about it all Friday night, I'll think about it all Saturday, and it'll, it'll torment me on Sunday until Monday comes. So what's the sense in opening it? So when I get one I know it's not good, I'll just leave it on the rack for Monday. Monday morning comes when I'm fresh and you, I'll open it, I'll say, okay, I'm ready to deal with whatever I need to deal with. You gotta protect your thinking. You gotta protect your heart. You gotta protect your mind. While it's still a thought, you can deal with it. Many a time I go to bed and, and there's a thought will come and I think, if I start to think about that, I'll be, th I'll be thinking about that all night. And some of them's good. I'll think about doing a conference or think about going somewhere. And you know if you start thinking that way, for the next hour you're going to toss and turn and, you and it's just going to excite you. So I know when them thoughts, even when the bad ones come, I'll just say, ha, 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 no way. And I'll turn over and I'll start thinking, purposely think about something else until I'm captivated with that, and then I'll fall asleep, and then I'll deal with the other at another time. You can stop it when it's a thought, but if you don't stop it at a thought, then it's the first layer of a stronghold, and then you will not be able to handle it on your own. You will need to do something more strategic, and you will need the Holy Spirit to help you do it. So you do need the Word of God. You need to meditate upon the Word of God. The word meditate means to, to like, a, like a cow chewing the cud. You've got you to bring it up and think it over again and think it over. Get one scripture a day and, and, and find it. You can buy them we, uh, in the Bible bookshops. You can buy them uh, word for today things. And get a scripture and then think about that one the rest of the day. Stay focused on it. Think about it. And, and let, it, let it become ingrained on the inside of you. Think about them scriptures. So you can sing the scriptures, you can quote them, you can write them down. When I, when I see someone, I have notebooks beside me all the time. And when I'm reading my scriptures for me, not for sermons, but for me, and I see someone, I'll automatically go over here and I'll write it out. I find when I write it out, I'll remember it better. There's something about me writing it out. Then all of a sudden, the detail of it's there. But if you'll write it out, because Romans chapter 10 and verse 17 says, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing the word of God. This here, faith doesn't come in by watching TV. Faith doesn't come in by even hearing somebody else's stories. They're exciting and they're good and we, and we get glad over that. But faith only comes through the Word of God. You read the Word of God and suddenly something comes alive in there and faith comes with that one word that you've just got. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2, out of the Amplified says, Set your mind and keep focused habitually on the things above, the heavenly things, and not on the things of earth which are only temporal. If you're trying to beat a stronghold, demolish a stronghold, you'll need a word. You'll need the word of God and you'll need a word from God, a specific word. And when you get that word from God, when God speaks to you and you see it and it's clearly about your circumstances, let me tell you something, set your mind on it and focus on it no matter what else is happening. The Bible says, and, and the Amplified, the classic version says it, the weapons are mighty. And listen, listen to this, they're mighty for the overthrow or the destruction of strongholds. You can't beat a stronghold by thinking or trying to just change your mind or break a habit. It won't go. It's there. The only thing that can demolish or destroy a stronghold is the Word of God on your lips. Were you focused and thinking about it? And when that stronghold rises up, you say, no, here's what the Word says. And you keep with that Word no matter how you feel, whatever it is, so that you break it in two and you, it caves in. There is weapons, and we know them. In Revelation 12, verse 11, it says, And they overcame him with the blood of the Lamb, 
with the blood. You can stand and declare the blood when their feelings come, when their thoughts come. You say, no, no, the blood, I'm forgiven, I'm washed. The blood covers me. You can use the blood. The Bible says, and they overcame them with the word of their testimony or the word of their confession or how they're confessing the word of God. So there again, it is taking the word of God and speaking that word of God it's primarily to that one situation, to that one hurt, to that one, that, that, that thing that's rising up inside you. Get a word and, and you can overcome it. You can conquer it. You will prevail. You will get the victory. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 17, it says, take the whole, uh, uh, but the whole armor, it says, take on the helmet of salvation. And then this one, the sword of the Spirit. Take on the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The Word of God is a sword. It's a weapon. So I looked this up just for my benefit again, where it says the Word of God, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and that word, word is rhema. So that's not the whole Bible. That is the specific word that fits your case. Did you get that? That's a rhema word. Rhema word is when somebody prophesies to you. When God says to you through a person, that's a rhema word. The, the word of God talking to you, this is a rhema word. When you've got the rhema word, that's a sword. That's a sword. And that's all you need. Now oh, you get one word like that there for health, strength, or whatever. Just keep using it. Keep using that. That is pushing back the enemy. Of course, we have the name of Jesus, the name that is above all names. When that stronghold is working against you, when those thoughts and emotions are tearing you on the inside, use the name of Jesus. It'll back down. It'll buy down. Just use it. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 6 and 11, he says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand and stand against the wiles or the attacks of the enemy. You can do this. You can do this. If you put on the armor, he says, you can do it. You will fight the good fight of faith. So strongholds are anything that exalts itself against the word of God, or anything that contradicts the truth. Anything that contradicts the truth. See, the devil will sell you a lie. So you've got to find out what God says, the real truth. He will tell you you can't when God has been telling you you can. And you've got to decide, I'm going to go with God's way. It'll go, it'll go directly against what God has said. And so you've got, to, you've got to understand it and get it settled in your heart. What does God say? What does he mean? And what is he saying to me? And then rise up against that heartache or that brokenness that's on the inside of you. In the book of Genesis chapter 3, it said, now the serpent, that's that dirty devil. The serpent, he was more cunning or more subtle, subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said unto the woman, now he's able to talk, he's having a discussion with her. So the devil, the serpent, said to the woman, hath God really said, did God really say that you shall not eat of the tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, what you doing talking to him? He's just contradicted God. He says, God didn't say that at all. What do you mean God said this? And now she's trying to have a reasoning with this devil. And she said, no, no. And the woman said unto the servant, we may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, yet we shall not eat, neither shall we touch it, lest we die. And this dirty devil, the serpent, said back unto the woman, you'll not surely die. The Bible said clearly, you will. This dirty devil now, he said, nah, no you won't. And then he reasons when he says, for, for God knows in the day that you eat that of your eyes will be open, and you shall be as God yourself, no one good from evil. You can't reason with these things. You can't have a discussion with the enemy. When you, I know people say, well, well, I was raising it and thinking it through, through and, and I'm a more of a logical person. Well, you need to get that out of your thinking because there's not lo nothing logical about a stronghold and there's nothing logical about the Word of God. You have got to make a mind up. I am going to believe what God said. It doesn't matter how I feel. It doesn't matter what the circumstances. I'm believing what God says because if I continue to believe what God says, these circumstances will change. And that stronghold will come tumbling down. You cannot agree with the devil. See, here she's having a discussion, reasoning the whole thing. Right? And the enemy's coming back to her with nice and subtle thoughts. And he just went on and on. And she kept talking and talking till one day she believed what that devil said. And then she became deceived. A stronghold starts with one thought. 
Just one thought. That's where it starts. It's a wrong thought. But if you listen to it and you think it over, let me tell you something, you'll get a second thought and a third thought. And if you think about them second and third thoughts for a while, let me tell you, there's a day it changes. And it's not just a thought anymore. It changes to an imagination. And now you can see yourself being there, feeling that. You can see your, you, you can feel it in your emotion. Now you see yourself, and now you start to predict. Well, I tell you, I don't know. I, I can't really see us getting out of it this time. I can't see how the Lord's going to heal me. I can't see how God's ever going to use me. Because now you're not in a thought anymore. You're over to the imagination. You can literally see it. There's a stronghold built in your life right now. It's not a thought anymore. If you'd have dealt with the thought, you wouldn't be here. But now we're here. It's not a thought anymore. The thought now, you took the thought, we're over now until a deception because the enemy has built up and now it's working on your imagination. When it gets to your imagination, you're dealing with something else called fear. Because when it opens your imagination, you start to get very fearful over these things. You'll start to fear that God will never use you. You get to fear, you to fear to speak in public in case somebody, uh, in, case, in case you make a fool of yourself and case people laugh at you. You get afraid that God can never use you to do anything. You get afraid to travel in a, pr uh, uh, a plane. You no, know, the, the girl, and she told me, she says, we were traveling from Canada one time, and she had a turbulence, and the plane dropped several hundred feet, and then came back up again, and she said, she says, I'll never fly on a plane again. And neither she did. It's a stronghold built up. Why would it ever happen again? It's a one-off situation. But I know people that had car accidents, instead of getting back into the car and driving, no, they decided I'm, I'm, I'm t t that could happen to me again. So they don't get in the car anymore, and sometimes they never leave their house anymore. It started with a thought, now their imagination has taken over. When it's in the imagination stage now, you've got a stronghold in your life. You imagine it's going to happen. You imagine you're going to get sick and you're going to die. You can almost see yourself in a wheelchair. You get, you get, you get, it's imaginations going crazy. And you know what happens now? You never try. You're afraid to fail because your imagination try. Oh, you need to do it. Everybody will just laugh at you. You're a nothing. You're a nobody. Your guy got a stronghold. You've not got a thought now. You've got a stronghold. And the stronghold is ruling your life. Let me put it in a different way. This stronghold now is destroying your life. Because you've got places to go and people to see, and you've got a life and you've got a calling, but you'll never do it. Because there's a stronghold that's talking to you. It's blocking off the feed from God in your life. So you'll never know what life is, and you'll never live life to the max. It's like when a deep hurt happens to you. And then you think, life's over. It, 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 it'll end here. I can't even see me. I can't ever see me getting on. I, I, I don't know how I'm going to live without him. So you think life's over. Sometimes you'll mutter and hear yourself saying, will things ever be the same again? You've not got a thought now. You've got a stronghold. And as long as you listen to those lies, let me tell you, that will hold you captive for the rest of your days. When it gets over to the imagination, you'll go, it drops into your image. So you end up with a negative image. Everything then. Nothing works out for us. Wow, well, look at, look. Yeah, I tell you, once you get a negative image, this thing's, this thing's taking you apart. Not, nothing's ever right with you. doesn't matter what anything happens. It's always got a negative response to it. Everyone's against us. Everybody loves you, but you think everybody's against you. Everybody's looking at me. They're, they're not looking at you. Nothing ever works for us. And let me tell you, look at him. I think he's talking about me. He's not even looking at you. And it gets to the place you get afraid to sleep with the light off. So you sleep every night with the light on. And it doesn't get better because it's not a thought now. It's a stronghold. It's there. It's a stronghold. And the image just gets worse. Fear is now operating in your life freely. It just comes out of that stronghold whenever it once hits you and then moves back in. And a fear now has an entrance into your thinking, into your life. With it now brings worry. I knew you when you were a teenager and you never worried about anything. Life and soul of the party. My goodness me, you were the first there and last out. But now you're worried about everything because there's a stronghold there. And fear 
is operating. And then there's anger rises. Well, I never was an angry person, Joe, until. That's right. When you took the thought, it dropped to an imagination. Now there's an anger. Now there's anxiety operating inside you. Then there comes addictions are right behind that. Then so some people, they go for isolation. And they don't want to go out of the house. They don't want to talk to anybody. I'm talking to you anymore. I'm not even looking at you anymore. And they, and they become insular. They become isolated because of fear. Fear of people looking at them. Fear of being, making fun of them and being embarrassed. Insecurities run their life. And then depression drops in. Fears. You've got to identify how it got started in the first place. What was the thought? What was the act? What, what happened at that moment in time? And you thought. And you meditated upon that thought. And you thought life was over. And then you didn't stop thinking about that. You talked about that and talked about it. And now it's over in the imagination. When it's in your imagination, it's a stronghold. And you can't break that yourself. Try as you will, you cannot. The Bible says the weapons of our war are mighty through God. You can only break the stronghold through the Word of God. You've got to now have the truth. You've got to know what God says, and you've got to confront it. And the minute you turn around and say, God says, that thing will argue with and say, no, 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 not for, that's okay for him and her and that and she, but not for you. You've got to stand up and say, no, no, this is the truth and this is for me. I preached last week here on a message about, about, about being slaves. If you weren't here, go back to last week's message on YouTube and watch it and how we were slaves and how we were owned by a slave owner and paraded down through the towns and bought and sold until a Redeemer came and paid a price, paid the ransom. Jesus' was life was a ransom, paid for us to be free. And the slave, the slave owner came, took us off the, off the marketplace, walked us outside, took the handcuffs off us, and then said, said I'm going to give you a new name, wrote a new name down, and went to the slave trader, paid the ransom, and said, now this is free. And then he turned to you and said, I don't really want you to be a slave. I'm going to give you your freedom. And he gave you a note. They gave the slave a note that said you were redeemed that you were free. The minute that you became free, the old slave owner had nothing more to do with your life. He ruled you. He taunted you. He broke you. He beat you. He did everything against you back then. But he's not your master anymore. The Lord Jesus is your master anymore. And you never have to listen to the dictates of the enemy in your lifetime again. Why would you go back and listen to the old slave owner when you don't belong to him anymore? You own, you're owned by the Redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ. So you need to find what he says about you and start telling yourself this is what God says. And then start to deal with it. Start to deal with those things. It's our 43 and verse 18 says, remember not the former things. And he says, don't even consider the things of old. Whatever it was back there, forget about it. Get over it. Put a line in the sand and say, that was then. I am not going to allow this to rule me. I am not going to allow this to hurt me anymore in my life. It's there. And I'll put flowers beside it. And, and I'll wave at it every now and then and say that was good, but it's not going to break me. It's not going to steal my life. He says, behold, I do a new thing. God has a new thing sitting ready for you, but while you're sitting at that closed door, you're going nowhere. Only an emptiness and tears. And you're sitting at the front door of a fortress against your life. You need to start and demolish the fortress. He says, I'm doing a new thing, and it's about to spring forth. I'll make a way in the wilderness, and I'll make rivers in the dark. God, when you turn, I know people that say, oh, I'll never be free. I, I, it'll never change. It will. God says, I'm always, always making a way of escape. I, I'm making rivers. I'm making roads. I'm making a way through this. He just says, trust me. But there's a stronghold trying to control you. You need to take authority over it. Whatever that is that's talking to you, whatever it is that's denying you your liberty, liberty and freedom, whatever it is that's tormenting, let me tell you, you've got to understand what the Bible says. The devil is the father of lies. My mother always told me, don't use this word, but I'll have to use it. The devil is a liar. And mother says, don't, use, don't call them that word. Don't use it. I need to do it again. The devil is a liar. Whatever he's telling you, the opposite is true. 
He'll tell you you die young. He can't tell me that anymore. But he used to. You can't. He'd say, he'd say you die young. He said, that means, no, you're a liar, devil. That means I'm going to die old. Absolutely. If he says you're going to be broke, that means, great, I'm going to have plenty. Whatever he's telling you, the opposite is true. Find out what the Word says. Find what the Bible says. And when God says you can, then you can. When God says all things is possible, argue back with that devil. Argue back. When the devil says it's all over, just say, no, devil, it's only starting. When the devil says you're going to lose the business, now say, no, I'm going to expand. Watch, this time next year, I'm going to expand. Call him out on it. He's telling you lies. He's in a fortress, and he's surrounded by lies. You need to start and demolish the strongholds. When he says you're finished, this will kill you. You need to rise up with the Word of God and say, I shall not die, but I shall live, and I shall declare the Word of the Lord. He promises you long life. You need to stand up with it. You need to begin to say, all is well. All is well. I will have a place. I will get a place. I will have my own home. I, I will get a new car. I will have this. You need to begin to confess those things over your life. Begin to tell yourself, it is working out, for God is making a way for me. He's making a way of escape. And start dealing with that devil. Start dealing with that one thought. How me tell you, put it this way. You're dealing with the devil that you have authority over. Did you get that? That that's, that that's talking to you and telling you you can't and you'll never. That is a liar. That is a devil. That's his spirit. And let me tell you, the Bible tells us you have authority over it. So why listen to it? Tell it. I'm not listening to you anymore. This is not God says I can have a life. God says I can have a good life. It's a process. It's a process that, that it doesn't happen overnight, but you've got to make a start somewhere. I mean, when, 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 Jer when, when the children of Israel come out of Egypt, the first major obstacle in their life was Jericho. I mean, God, God is God, Almighty God. He could have turned around to Josh, Joshua uh, 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 and the rabbi and said, pull up a chair, boys, take a grandstand seat, watch me, and stand back and go, boom, and the whole walls could have just exploded, and God would have said, hey, what about that, boys? But he didn't do that. He said, no, no, no. He said, I want to show you the power and might that I can have operating through you. So he said, follow me. And he didn't do it on the first day. He said, for the, for the next six days, I want you to walk around Jericho. Let me tell you, Jericho wasn't like walking around Lurgan Park. Jericho wasn't like walking like from, Jericho's a huge city. And he told him, he says, every day for the next six days, I want you to walk around the walls of that city. And he says, when you come to the seventh day, he said, we'll walk around it seven times. Ha <laughs> ha! You've got to do some things yourself. But when they did it, but when they did it, the walls sunk into the ground. The walls just dropped and the city fell. You've got strongholds. And let me tell you something, brother and sister in the Lord. You have to start and make a start and come against it. You have to do it this way. Instead of reasoning and logically thinking it through, find what God said. And no matter else, just keep talking that word, keep going with that word. Look, it took time to build this stronghold up. This didn't start yesterday. This has taken 10 years to build. Some of it took longer because your granddaddy taught it to your daddy, and now your daddy taught it to you when you were on his knee. And now you got strongholds in there that came from your forefathers. It took ages to build it up inside. Sometimes it takes a while to pull it down. But you have to start. Jesus talked about casting out devils. That's a spirit. It's called eviction. When you say, it, get out. And it has to go. But when he's talking about strongholds, he uses a different word. When he talks about casting down, the, the you know, other translations put it better. It says, the demolishing the demolishing. That's not putting something out. That's demolishing it. And demolishing it, there's only one way to demolish it. Here's what the Bible says in John 8 and 32. It says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth is the Word of God. The only thing that's going to destroy that, that stronghold is the truth. Now, let me tell you something. There is an anointing that comes when Jesus Christ is in the house. It's used, for, it's used to blast the doors off the strongholds. 
It's used to bring breakthroughs for people in an instant of time. It's an anointing. And it can break in a second. There's a relief can come from a second. But let me tell you something. That stronghold still has to be dealt with. This is where you're going to have to go home and you're going to have to get the Word of God. And let me tell you, in this building, people will be set free. People is listening on YouTube. There's an anointing that will kick the door open. There's an anointing that will stop the pain almost instantly. There's an anointing will break it. But let me tell you, when that starts to look out the windows again at you, you're going to have to tell it the truth. And you're going to have to say, I'm not belonging to you anymore. And you can't do this to me anymore. And I'm sorry about that, but I'm not hurting anymore. You're going to have to find what the Word says and stand up against the Word of God. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. In fact, then you go down four verses later, it says, If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. That's two different things. This Jesus setting you free in a second of time. The other one is where you're demolishing strongholds. So we can get you set free now in a second of time. In the next minute or two, we can get them thoughts stopped. We can get that broken. We can get the power of it broken. But you, my friend, are the one that's going to have to find the word and stick with it until the whole thing is destroyed completely. So you have to make up your mind. You're going to have to make up your mind. Decide you're going to quit smoking. Or now it is, it's vaping, I believe. Decide you're not going to vape anymore. Decide you're not going to drink anymore. Say, what harm is there in drinking? Well, let me tell you something. Most people that tell me as Christians they, they're drinking, I'll usually say to them, how long have you been doing that? They say, well, we've been doing it quite a while. I said, okay, give it up then. I said, do without it for the next week. I say, I say don't take another drink now for another week. Say, well, I say, before you go to sleep at night, don't take another drink. And they'll say, I could stop it if I want. I said, okay, try. And they'll come back and say, well, I tried and I'm really struggling with it. That's right, because you don't have control over it. It has control over you. You give access to something of your life. And here's the problem with the drink. The first crisis that hits your life, you won't run to God. You'll run to the bottle. I guarantee you. Because the bottle then becomes your crutch. The bottle becomes your source. But let me tell you, if you don't have that, you'll run to God, and then you'll see breakthroughs right, left, and center. So why don't you make up your mind today and say, I'm not drinking anymore? Why don't you decide to break the gambling from off your life? Why don't you decide to break the lust from off your life? And there's people, there's men, and they can't look at a woman but have a pure thought. If they're talking to believers, but they're talking to a woman, and they're looking her up and down. They're talking to a woman, and they're holding their hand, and they won't let the hand... Any girls, you know what I'm talking about? They, they hold your hand, and they won't let your hand go. Mr. Sleaze has a hold of you. Does anybody know what I'm uh, Hello? And they hold your hand, and they're looking in your eyes. Let me tell you, and their wife's about six paces back, and the minute she comes up, the hands go, we're doing all right. And you got a problem. Why don't you make a decision? It works the other way, by the way. That there's women, and they can't look at a man without following out the door and, and having thoughts. It's lust. And somewhere in Asia, it becomes a struggle. It started probably when you were 14 or 15 back in school when somebody showed you something or suggested something. But over the years when you thought about it, it built to a stronghold and it's still there. And let me tell you someone, if a stronghold's in there, one day it'll pull you down. It'll set you up in a second. It'll bide its time and wait until you're at the top and suddenly you're at the bottom in a second of time. Why don't you today decide that stronghold has to go? I'm going to break the power of smoking. I'm going to break the power of the vaping and the drinking and the gambling and the lust. I'm going to start a new life. That, that stronghold is not going to be in my life anymore. I'm not going to cry anymore. I'm not going to weep anymore. I'm going to get my life back. I'm going to go where I want to go. I'm going to do what God wants me to do. So I won't ask you to come up the front because you wouldn't come, you'd be too embarrassed because everybody thinks you've got a stronghold. I would probably say everybody has one. You're just too shy to talk about it, so we won't talk about it. But here's what we'll do. We'll stand to our feet right now. Well, you want to stand to your feet with me? Now, if you don't want to stand, it's fine, hey? Don't, no, don't, don't be standing because just uh, cause Pastor Joe says we're to stand and everybody. If you don't want to stand, it's fine with me, honest to goodness. Honest to goodness. But here's what I'm going to do. We're going to help each other. I won't ask you to say anything or do anything. I won't ask you to acknowledge anything. No, I would never do that. We, we're, we'd like to embarrass the devil, not embarrass you. But why don't you take somebody's hand? Why don't you get into smaller type of groups? Go to walk over there and hold somebody's hand. I've always said grab a hand. Just make sure there's an arm attached to it. That's right. Grab a hand. 
And, 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 and we're going to pray. We're going we're to take a prayer here now. Absolutely. Whether it's small groups or big groups, I, I, I don't mind what it is, is. But we're all in this together. We all have to live together. But we've found out there's things that's operating against us. There was thoughts we took. Now we've got strongholds. But here's what we're going to do. In Jesus' name, we're going to take authority over the strongholds. You have a hold of somebody else and you're taking authority over the strongholds in their life and you're about to break it down for them. You're about to give liberty and freedom to somebody that they haven't had in 20 years. They're not going to pull their hair out anymore. They're not going to turn to the drink anymore. They're not going to get aggressive and angry and full of jealousy and envy. I am telling you, just, to, just for that if you weren't jealous over everybody anymore and, and somebody comes in with a nice dress or a nice tie, you're not going to turn around and say, well, I'm not sitting beside them. Look at that. It's terrible looking. And really what you meant is, if they're giving it away, I'd like it. <laughs> oh, yes. That's what it is. It's all jealousies. Don't live with jealousy. Don't live with that. Live in freedom. Where if somebody says, I'm going to the moon and back, say, can I be a punk? Can I take a photograph when you go? Rejoice. Celebrate in people's victories. You can only do that if you're free. If you're free. So are you ready? I won't ask you about the hurts, but you know they're there. I won't ask you about the trauma that you live through. I won't ask you about it, but it's there. It had to have a start, but it's what you said and did thereafter that allowed, over a period of time, it allowed a stronghold. This morning, we are believing now for the anointing of the Spirit of God to shatter the thought, to take the root, the pain, the sorrow out of that in a second of time. Well, I, I, I've seen most of the time when you do that, the stronghold crumbles anyway. But I was been there a long time and it's a bad boy one, then you will have to get a hold of the Word of God and stand against it until it's done. Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning for an anointing that destroys the yoke. It makes devils scream and, and run. It, 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 it makes the torment and devils that wants to torment. It turns the torment back on them. Devil, we know what you've done. We know how you're doing it. We know exactly how you're operating against us, against our family. You know your heart. We know how you're operating. Ah, oh, Father, I wish I would have known that. Maybe that person wouldn't have suicided because we could have dealt with it. But we didn't know. But we know right now. We know now. So we can't deal with anybody else but ourselves. And Father, we stand before you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we declare liberty. And we declare freedom. We're sorry we took that thought. We're sorry we argued over that thought. We lay it right now back at the feet of Jesus. And we declare that it's finished and it's over. It has no power over us in Jesus, in Jesus' name. We take authority over that thought of that spirit of infirmity that come in with its rush and its idea and its pain here and its suffering here and then we, 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 we give it a liberty. We take authority over that spirit of infirmity in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We take authority over that spirit of anger that we allowed to operate against us. That spirit of lust we take authority over you in Jesus name. That spirit of addiction we command you to leave this very morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jealousy and envy I command you to leave. Despair Spare, I command you to get out in Jesus' name. The thought that will never be loved again, nor we can never love again, it's a lie, and I cast you down today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We command liberty and freedom into the minds of people. That, Father, there is a time of grief and a time of sorrow, but it's not going to control us, and it's not going to rule our life in a never again. We are standing up tall on the inside as a fresh move of God that starts this morning, that our pathways are not closed. Our doorways are open to us. You are making a way of escape right now. We command heart disease to stop in its activities against us. And we declare that our heart is fixed, O oh Lord. We declare that our knees and our, and our elbows and our joints is, is flexible again. That rheumatism has to go. MS has to go in Jesus' name. 
fibromyalgia has to shrivel up and die in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bowel complaints has to go. Nervous, uh, the, the, our whole nervous system shattered and high alert. I command that to stop. I command it to stop right now in Jesus' name. And that devil that's destroying families. How dare you? How dare you? We, we reach out to our families now with love and blessing of every type in Jesus' name. That, that devil will not destroy our families. That spirit of suicide will not operate in our homes or in our houses. No, no, no. Not in through ours in Jesus' name. Every bloodline curse that's been placed upon us, over us and through us, we break it now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That only what's of you, Lord, will become into our life. We declare a brand new life. We declare a whole new life. It doesn't matter if they walked away and they forgot about us and they left us in a heap. The heap's over. We are standing tall right now. We're going to have a better life, a great life, more, more liberty and freedom. We will have money. The business will not fail. The business will succeed. I thank you for wisdom that you're sending already. People who knows how to do things in our life to make life work. I thank you for new friendships. I thank you for friends that won't betray or let us down. New friendships that will help us go places and do things together. I thank you for an anointing, a fresh anointing in this generation. I thank you for the call that's on our life. I thank you, Father, we will fulfill it. There is no stronghold can stop that now in Jesus' name. And Holy Spirit is a final prayer. I pray that some of these people have read your word but never saw a rhema word. Some of these people have never heard from the Spirit of God. Some of these people, Holy Spirit, have never heard from you. So I, I, I'm asking you now, I'm asking you, as they open the Word of God this week and begin to read, I, I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, will you talk to these people through a scripture, through a sentence, a paragraph, through, through an intention or the spirit of the word that you'll speak to them through the New Testament this week or the Old Testament or through the Psalms that you'll speak to them. Give them a word that will be directly for them that whenever these other thoughts from the strongholds come, they can begin to annihilate and begin to push it down and begin to tear it down. We're going to believe that strongholds are being pulled down now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 